a photo shoot featuring one of the rarest marvels of aviation engineering would turn into a catastrophic disaster. This is the story of how one of the US Air Force's most advanced aircraft of the time would meet its unexpected demise. The 8th of June 1966, the Mojave Desert, California, the United States of America. A promotional photo shoot featuring five aircraft and a chase plane is taking place for the company General Electric, who manufacture the engines used in all of the aircraft featured. Taking the lead spot is the centerpiece of the five-plane formation, an XB-70 Valkyrie. One of only two ever built, it is an experimental prototype supersonic bomber with a planned cruise speed of Mach 3, meaning three times the speed of sound, and an operating altitude of 70,000 feet. It was to be the ultimate high-altitude, high-speed, manned strategic bomber aircraft. Originally conceived in the late 50s, it was designed to be so fast it would be very difficult to track on radar and outrun any interceptor aircraft the Soviets had at the time. It would have replaced older, slower and more exposed aircraft such as the B-52. But in the 1960s, following advancements in surface-to-air missile technology, the proposed B-70 would have been confined to low-altitude missions instead, where it wouldn't really offer any tangible advantage over existing bombers, and so was never put into production. But the two existing airframes would instead be used for research into future SST, or supersonic transport projects, when the US were looking into the possibility of offering a Concorde competitor. Photographing the formation is a sixth aircraft, a private jet carrying photographers. The shoot, coordinated between General Electric, NASA and the US Air Force, is wrapping up with the five planes still in formation at 25,000 feet. The jet off to the Valkyrie's starboard side, an F-104 Starfighter, is keeping visual separation from the much larger aircraft. The crews of the formation aircraft and the chase plane are informed of a B-58 bomber passing overhead. All aircraft spot the passing bomber except for the F-104, who is still trying to locate it. As he does so, his fighter begins to drift to the left. Taking him completely off guard, his plane is flipped up and over, careering into the XB-70's tail fins, destroying them, bursting into flames and breaking up. The NASA test pilot is killed on impact. For a full 16 seconds, the Valkyrie continues to fly straight and level. But with the loss of the vertical stabilizers, the jet begins a rolling motion to the right, becoming inverted, then spiraling out of control. One of the two pilots on board manages to bail out of the falling jet, but due to him not being in the correct position, he injures his arm when the ejection capsule closes down on it. The massive bomber plunges to the earth below and crashes into the desert. The second pilot is unable to escape. What was meant to be a simple photo shoot has ended up in the loss of two aircraft, and even worse, two test pilots. An investigation is launched to determine what went wrong. Helped by photo and video of the events leading up to the collision, they soon determined the accident was caused by a phenomenon known as wake turbulence. Wake turbulence is the powerful vortex of air created by aircraft, basically a miniature horizontal tornado generated by the pressurised air leaving the aircraft's wingtips. The XB-70, with its massive delta wing, generated strong vortices that pulled the smaller fighter towards it and flipped it over as its pilot was distracted looking for the aircraft passing above the formation after accidentally veering too close. The USAF Accident Investigation Report concludes that due to the F-104's position relative to the XB-70, its pilot would have had limited visibility of the Valkyrie's wing, which was located behind him. To see it, he would have needed to uncomfortably turn his head over his left shoulder, suggesting that he likely would have maintained his position by focusing on the XB-70's fuselage, which was ahead of his position. At the time of the collision, the fighter was estimated to be approximately 70 feet to the side of the bomber's fuselage and 10 feet below it. 
From this vantage point, without clear visual cues, he may have not been able to accurately judge his movement relative to the Valkyrie's wingtip, combined with him having to locate the other passing traffic above them. His aircraft slowly drifted into its wing vortex without him noticing, leading to the collision. With minimal room for error, there is always an inherent risk during close formation flying at high speeds. Even the smallest misjudgment can lead to catastrophe. It is also discovered that the General Electric photo shoot had not actually been properly authorised by the Air Force, and after the catastrophe, a number of USAF personnel involved are either removed from their post or reprimanded. With only one XB-70 remaining, the program is scaled back significantly. The surviving Valkyrie would continue to operate for a few more years before being retired. Today, it remains on display at the National Museum of the US Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, a reminder of both the incredible potential and tragic loss of the program. Despite the accident, the data collected from the XB-70 would influence future aircraft design. Its legacy continues to inspire both engineers and aviation fans to this day. The General Electric photo shoot accident was a tragic chapter in aviation history, but also served as a crucial lesson in the dangers of high-speed flight testing and formation flying. While the Valkyrie never became the bomber it was originally envisioned as, its contributions to aerospace research left a lasting impact. A few decades later, the US Air Force would actually introduce a supersonic bomber into service in the form of the B-1 Lancer, albeit designed to fulfil a different mission to the B-70. If you enjoyed this mini YouTube documentary, make sure to give it a like rating for the time and effort it took me to make it, then subscribe if you aren't already so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.